The K-25 facility, after closure, was left in a deteriorating condition. It was a bunch of shut down 1950s era facilities that were all falling down. I mean, literally falling down. The roof was beginning to deteriorate. Debris all throughout the building. Water and wildlife entering the buildings. Radioactive material. Metal, plastic. Rusted material. Contaminated items. Lots of contamination. So we had to do something. We were probably one tornado away from a pretty significant environmental problem. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. These views of the most concentrated release of explosive energy in the history of mankind. Work on the bomb went steadily forward in closely guarded plants in New Mexico, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Hanford, Washington. I think we all know that uh, Oak Ridge came to be for a national security reason. It was during the World War II that it became obvious that there needed to be a technology to help end that war. We were afraid that some other countries would attack, so the Manhattan Project was born. Uranium had to be enriched for the first time in the history of mankind. Plutonium had to be produced uh, for the first time in the history of, of mankind. The construction started on the K-25 site in 1943. And in 18 months had built a one-of-a-kind facility and the largest industrial facility anywhere in the world. After the, the war was over, war the Cold War started. Soviet policies clashed with those of the United States. So it continued to operate right up into the 80s as a means of enriching uranium. It was the only method for enriching uranium that the U.S. had at the time. The buildings were operational into the early 80s. In 85, they were put in uh, standby, and then in 87, they were shut down. I first learned about the shutdown of K-25 before I had moved back to Oak Ridge. Overnight, thousands of people lost their jobs, and I remember my parents being very concerned about the impacts it would have on the city. So it was a big deal. It was a very big concern. What in the world are we going to do next? I thought the site would always be there. And when it was obvious that the site was no longer necessary, then we were trying to figure out what's next. I was the site manager. I was in charge of 5,000 people. You know, what's the next activity for the families and the community? So it was a lot of discussion, a lot of blueprints, a lot of soul searching. Obviously, we'd seen thousands of jobs disappear because of the uh, decommissioning of the plant. But we also had the opportunity to put a lot of people to work taking the plant down and restoring the property for the community. Something had to be done. Uh, we had massive industrial facilities loaded up with processed gas equipment, which contain highly enriched uranium within that. We're going to leave them as is and let the rust and Every, you know, degraded facilities damage the environment and, you know, the community. We have to clean this up. We've got to get rid of all this. We have to turn all this back to the community and let the community reuse it. So in the late 80s, we made a decision to proceed with cleanup. This is, used to be a, a laboratory. Uh, we tore this, this building down. It was contaminated inside. We'll take confirmatory measurements and samples to make sure it's absolutely clean. And then once it's clean, it'll be free released and then back to public use. We actually have torn down hundreds and hundreds of buildings on site. Uh, some small, like this one, this is actually a small building. Uh, some large, it's almost a mile long and four stories high. When the K-25 building was built, it was the largest building in the world. The site was over five million square feet. Massive, it's, it's just huge. Had approximately 45 acres of building under one roof. In order to get that building down, it was gonna take a lot of effort to make sure you did it safely. So it was a big job to take it down. We actually began the process working from the inside. 
and found that to be too difficult. I actually had a worker accident that was very serious. The hardest day I had was the day that one of our workers fell through a floor, fell 30 feet to the floor below. And all rights should not have lived through that. Most people don't survive falls like that. We actually had to spend a lot of money on the building, making it safe to take down. So we stepped back and completely revamped our plans to stabilize the building and then demolish it from the outside. So right around 1999, 2000, we actually started with uh, some work in the first three gaseous diffusion buildings out there with taking a lot of the heavy equipment out. In 2006, the first large enrichment building was actually taken down. 2016, we took the last enrichment building down, and between 2016 and 2020, we've taken down the remaining structures at the facility or at the site. So Oak Ridge has been kind of a trailblazer, particularly when it comes to the cleanup business. It's the first time in the history of the world that a complete gaseous diffusion complex has been cleaned up and turned over. We really were the first program to take on such a large-scale cleanup effort and such a unique cleanup effort. We were the first program to assemble the necessary workforce to get that done. And we're certainly the first program to have such success with the conversion of a site that was originally a national liability, costing about tens of millions of dollars simply to maintain, and converting it into something that is of great value to the community. We've accomplished this four years ahead of schedule, $80 million under budget, and have saved $500 million on our environmental liabilities for this country. That is a huge savings. How often is it you hear about a federal project that's ahead of schedule and under budget? That in and of itself sets it apart. Nobody had the recipe or the blueprint for accomplishing that, so Oak Ridge did it. It gave me a real heartfelt gratitude to see what we were able to accomplish and what it means to the community of Oak Ridge. If you come to Oak Ridge and come to the K-25 site now, what you see unfolding is a future industrial park where you can get on a mountain bike at lunch break and drive tens and tens of miles or you can go visit a national park. We had, in my view, an incredible team that helped put the plan together, helped carry the plan out. We've really gone from a facility that was behind a fence, presenting hazards, presenting security issues, to something that's of great value to the community. It was a joint effort between the contractors, the DOE, the regulators, the community. Everybody had a role to play and everybody played their part and did it well. Doing this type of building demolition work and equipment demolition work takes a very highly skilled workforce. What I would say to the workforce is thank you uh, for the hard work you've done out there. We could not be here without you. I come to work every day. The reason I come to work every day, the reason the feds are here is not just because we show up in the federal building, but it's for the work that gets accomplished out of the side. I can't tell you how, how proud I am of this workforce and you know, the, the money shot is always the building falling down or the loading of the, the debris, but the guys that are doing the hard work that's never seen or appreciated, all those people don't get a lot of credit because without everybody working together, uh, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish this. The pride that I have in our workforce, our management, um, the team, we wouldn't have been where we're at right now. Um, they're amazing. All the engineering in the world can't get accomplished if you don't have the craft that's out in the field doing it. The men and women that were in maintenance, that were in engineering, that were in what we call operations analysis, the facility managers, the shift workers, without all of them, none of this would have been possible. You know, you, you can sit down and, make, and have the best laid plans, but actually people and relationships are what really makes things happen. This is like the final chapter of the book 
and we want it to be a happy ending, you know, and then we'll have a sequel that talks about reindustrialization and, and moving forward uh, to create more jobs here in, in Oak Ridge. Because of the site's history, it has a lot of features that make it uniquely attractive for industrial redevelopment. Obviously, we're able to provide massive amounts of electrical power to the site. We have infrastructure such as barge access, rail access, proximity to the interstate, that all are features that should make it attractive for redevelopment. I think the community is going to gain a great deal from the completion of that site. The land itself could be reutilized for economic purposes for the community. I remember the first time I came in, this building was up, this building was up, this building was up, this building was up, and this was also up. Now it's just evolving into a future. The first time I came on site, it was exciting. I had goosebumps. It was magical. You know, it's kind of like the birds were flying, you know, the leaves were, were, were moving. It was a beautiful site. It was gorgeous. No longer is this going to be a secret city. It's going to be a city where everyone's going to know where we're at and what we're doing. I think Oak Ridge has a really significant legacy. It's the origins of the nuclear era. It has played a role for the past several decades in preserving the security of the nation. This is the first successful decommissioning, demolition of any diffusion plant in the world. I can remember back in 1964, the first building I worked in was right at that telephone pole right there. Little did I know I'd be standing here today celebrating the fact that it's no longer here. It's just been a really unique place for America. This is home. I'm at home. Right now, I am at home.